Today on the Skid Factory, we're switching off the kettle and playing it cool with a freshly rebuilt TD42. Welcome back to the Diesel Factory. This is part two of rebuilding a Nissan TD42 diesel engine. In the last episode, we pulled down this very old and high mileage engine, inspected it for wear and other things, and had a little bit of a chat about the things that go wrong with TD42 engines, uh, common problems like overheating and that sort of thing. Since then, we have cleaned the engine up as good as we could. It's a very oily black beast, and we brought it down here to John's shed. John is our friend who is a, an engine machinist and builder by trade. So he has then put the measuring equipment over the engine, the bores, the crankshaft, and inspected the cylinder head to work out what is worn out beyond spec, what can be repaired, what can be ground, what can be bored, whatever. Uh, and now we're at the point where everything's laid out, it's freshly machined, it's clean, We've got all the parts on the table and we're going to start putting it back together. And as we go through that process, we'll talk about the individual bits and pieces and what's required, what the differences are between an NA and a turbo engine and that sort of thing. Let's get stuck into it. Oh, get the muscle in for the show. <laughs> So the first thing you've got to fit to the engine before anything goes in is these oil squirters. Um, mainly because you can't get at them once there's a crankshaft spinning around in there. Um, these things are fairly important and they are actually different between a turbo and non-turbo engine. And because we're upgrading to the turbo engine, we're also changing the oil squirters to suit. So here's the non-turbo squirter and that's the turbo one. You can see it's obviously got an extended reach on it and there's a little bit more to it than that. We'll have to have a look at the piston to show you what, what that actually does. This is our fresh turbo piston. Um, these are actually genuine spec uh, Izumi pistons from Japan, which I was told that is a very good idea to go with these rather than a, a cheaper model. Uh, so this oil squirter, that there is a relief for it. And when the piston comes down to bottom dead center, that actually goes in, up in there and it fills the inside of the piston crown, lower piston crown up in here pumps oil in there to cool the piston crown and that is very important on a on a diesel engine that's making a bit of power and and working hard these crowns get very very hot and oil even though it's hot it's taking the heat out of the piston crown and that that's a part of keeping the engine alive under power uh, so the non-turbo engine it still has squirters but all they that they just squirt in the general direction you can see the piston the lower part of the piston is just open whereas that they've gone to a lot of trouble to direct the oil into a very specific spot to take the heat out of the the bottom of the piston crown so that's an interesting one and one of the many things that is different between the na and turbo engines uh, at the core Where did you learn the two-click thing from? What was that from? No, that was just no a, it's just because when you let it off, it goes... It someone that raged that said that if you clicked it twice, it, was, it wasn't talked properly anymore. <laughs> Where's Gus gone? And he's left just when we need him to put the crankshaft in. I think he's gone to Fernwood to do yoga.
Hey, Missy. How are you doing there? Wait. 7767. God damn, I'll be here for a while. What about 170? It's that flash thing. Digital. Get with the times. John's just laid the crank in and put the, the thrust cap on just so we can check the actual thrust because that hasn't been checked yet. It's uh, within spec on the higher side, which is good. The crank has been ground 10 thou or 0 0.025 millimeters under. So it's just general wear from, from high mileage uh, and it's got bearings to suit that. That's both on the mains and the um, Conrod journals. While we're on the crank subject, there is a difference between the factory turbo cranks and the NA cranks. This uh, flange for the flywheel is larger on a factory turbo engine by some amount. I can't remember what it is. It's kind of like just a, a random Japanese engineering thing where they just go, okay, we've gone past this amount of torque, so now we need the flange to be this big. They do that with wheel, wheel studs and stuff like that as well. Um, it's just an engineering thing. And also this thread here where the nut goes on the front, that's larger as well. I've been told by the experts that neither of those things really make any difference at the power levels we're talking. And uh, the crankshaft usually breaks before that, any of that thing, that becomes a problem anyway. So a um, uh, NA crank is fine to use. We love the piston slap. We love you, Frank. <laughs> Note to self, this goes on before all those pulleys and gears and shit. The bottom end is all assembled now and we're ready to put the cylinder head on. Uh, we've put the the gear drive on the front on twice because we forgot to put the, the back plate on, but you get that. We just wanted to, to talk about the liners that are in this engine. Uh, diesel engines quite often have a liner and this particular one is called a dry liner. Uh, bigger diesel engines have a wet liner that you can actually just pull the entire thing out with o-rings and just replace but these ones they got to be just hit out with a special tool that goes in the bottom of it so John knocked those out and then what he does is check the parent bore which is the actual block itself and make sure that its size is up to spec in this case it actually wasn't it was sort of out of round a little bit and um, the problem with that is you get new liners and you can push them in and you can then uh, finish hone them and the piston will be okay, but, but this this needs to be uh, pressed against the block itself um, very tightly and, and 
have full contact everywhere because that's where the heat dissipates into the cylinder block and it can cause all sorts of problems. So we had the block actually bored in the parent bore before the liners were put in. So we had to order liners that were actually oversized on the outside. Uh, the other thing that, that needs to be done is everything needs to be measured up after that parent bore's done. Then the deck needs to be uh, finished because they have a protrusion and that protrusion is what seals the head gasket and also holds this in properly. So that's a, a specific measurement that has to be adhered to. So you deck it, then these liners get um, cut to size and then they're pressed in and then your protrusion should be within the specification that it's supposed to be. Uh, so that's all done. It was a little bit of extra work, but to do it the right way, that's what you got to do. Uh, I reckon it's a pretty reasonable expense compared to buying a 500,000 kilometer old turbo engine that's $10,000. So let's get stuck into putting that cylinder head on. We've got a new cylinder head for the engine. The old cylinder head had a crack in it and it's not worth fixing them basically. Uh, this is a turbo spec head and there is a, a couple of differences between the NA and turbo. Uh, one of them is the pre-combustion chamber, which you can see there is a visible difference in that uh, the entry hole. So the combustion event starts inside here, the injector fires in there and, and basically shoots out of here. So uh, that's a, a, a visible difference between them. Um, there is some other little differences, but I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, one, and one of the other main differences is the seating height of these valves is different because the turbo pistons don't have as much of a uh, sort of a combustion chamber in, in the piston itself. So those valves have to be seated in further. Um, this stuff's all documented in the, in the, with the engine build kit that you have to get it right so um, we have put new valves in the engine in the head and also valve springs uh, that i bought a bare head but the valves just turned out to be um, too thin once they were um, like dressed so uh, i probably should have just bought a complete head but you get that i'm not a td42 expert what i know about it is basically from this engine build and doing the research and talking to people who do know what they're talking about if you have a lot of experience with td42s and you want to add to this um, get in the comment section and um, let people know we're all here to learn about stuff so we're not talking shit on the internet So we've done two, two torque stages and the third stage is actually a degree setting, so it's 110 degrees. Um, John's flash torque wrench has actually got degrees on it as well as, as um, like newton meters and pound feet, that's pretty cool. So yeah, we're doing the final stage now. And the paint marks are just to, to identify the fact that we've done that bolt. So you can't really go over them with a torque wrench and check after with a degree setting because you can't.
that's the long motor all assembled. We have to bolt on a fair amount of ancillary still. Uh, problem is some of them were corroded pretty badly because it obviously hasn't had coolant running through it for a while. So I've had to replace the front cover and the oil filter housing uh, due to corrosion. So I'm waiting to get some uh, good units of those and then we will bolt them on. Uh, we've also got to you know, pretty up the valve cover and whatnot, put some wrinkle red on it, I suppose. Uh, but for the moment we're, we're finished with the assembly of the long motor that the idea of this video was to show you the difference between our turbo and NA uh, TD42 there are differences in them a lot of people will run an NA silver top and boost it and, and and they'll make a lot of power but at some st stage they're gonna fail and sometimes that's just due to the fact that they're ancient as well but this is a viable option for you to upgrade the, your existing engine or to just go and find a, a cheap worn out TD42 and put the, 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 the bits and pieces that we've used in here. They're readily available from multiple people online. So go out and shop. Got to give a big thanks to John as usual and Mandy for having us at, the, at their house. And um, it's worth noting that John's helped us on heaps of builds and of engine builds but it's not his um it's not his business it's just his house he's he, he doesn't work as a, an engine builder anymore he just does it because he enjoys it so uh don't call him and especially don't call him if you've got a diesel because he doesn't like them <laughs> we, we got away with this one but it's going to cost me some beers if you want to if you want to check out uh any more of john's work or check out his only fans up here you might see some some saucy stuff there <laughs> <laughs> Hot yoga, he reckons. <laughs> we're going to load this up and take it back to the shed and we're going to collate all the bits we need, bolt it all together and then we're going to start looking at the, the cool stuff that we're going to put on the outside to make this a more powerful engine. We've got a turbo, we've got an injector pump coming from JH Hilux up in Townsville that he's built especially for what I told him was a what I thought I wanted. <laughs> so um, he's a, a cool guy and we'll hopefully get some interesting injector pump um, knowledge from him to share with you guys. So once we do that, we'll think about putting it in the car and that'll be a whole other adventure. So stay tuned for that. We don't know when that's gonna happen. These things take time. So stick around and we'll get back to some more TD42 love. If you like what you see, share it with your mates, and like and subscribe and all that stuff. And if you want to support the show, uh, go to the merch store at theskidfactory.com and grab yourself a hoodie or a t-shirt or all, any of that other stuff. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I didn't know you are a hot yoga fan, John. Oh yeah. What day do you do that on? I might have to come when, join you. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, sometimes in the morning down at the beach. Oh yeah, yeah. a sunrise session. Yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs>